attach the tumble turn with the link to the video that Marcus and Karen did where they danced it together. And I think they really covered all the points that I want to talk about. But today, Rich, we had some questions and I think that when you go back having worked on it, go back and look, you'll see more that we talked about. Some of the things that are happening in the body are not that visible on the outside, but they need to be done to stabilize the body and to make things work. And one of those examples is where we need CBM or where we need to hold the CBM. And it's not that noticeable unless you're really looking for it because it's not extreme. Now, for instance, what I was talking about in the body, uh, winding and unwinding or having uh, different amounts of rotation from one part to the other. That is something that Marcus didn't talk about. So let's talk about that. We did a few exercises today on doing that. Now, when he's moving back, you're probably not uh, clear on seeing the CBM as he's preparing to move into the tumble. Many people say they can't see CBM because it's not extreme. It simply looks square. But if I did an extreme amount, now I would have a distortion. You can see it a little bit more when he's actually dancing it with Karen. And she makes a point of talking about her first step of the tumble turn. She talks quite a bit about the use of her standing leg and her thigh, how she's working through that to get her strong forward drive into one. And so you can see more so, even though she's wearing the dress, you can see that her thigh is curving and preparing the turn. So that's very important that we realize how much to use the legs to prepare the turn. That of course does come from my torso beginning to wind against the moving leg. But as you can see when I move back, it has the appearance of being square. So be aware of how much shaping needs to be done in the legs and in the thighs. So if we translate what she was talking about in her right thigh moving forward toward Marcus, and of course, had she done something like this and twisted her top, we would have the disaster. So she's moving forward, but she's moving forward with the attention to curve. So in your technique, now the tumble is not in the technique in the syllabus. This would be an open figure. But these figures that have turn will always say commence to turn. So that's what it means. It doesn't mean to have an extreme amount, visible amount of CBM. So we're making sure that felt very different to you when you felt what I call a winding, because you're beginning to curve the body to the left, to the legs and the spine. The other thing is coming from the running weave, we're in this position. Now, once again, and you can see a very nice picture of Marcus from the back, where you simply see the legs looking very close together. You don't see any big drastic turn in his body but he is in CBMP in that position. So as he's dancing the last step of the running weave, his hip is moving back, the foot is in CBMP. This of course would be too much and twisted, but sometimes when I'm watching you, you're square. Then shoulder weight begins to fall. You're not able to pre prepare the turn to the left. So the running weave is a natural weave. It's turning to the right. We have that right turn in our backward movement and now as we collect we have to get in front of the girl he made a point of talking about that and we need to prepare the left turn so have a feeling of my right thigh turning in again not extreme then we're going on to step two now i've heard this described many times as an overturn feather finish if we dance the feather finish we would have less sway than we have on the tumble but we would continue on moving forward so if I think of this as an overturn feather finish with a bit more sway, completing with a reverse pivot, it can give you a little bit better understanding. The other part that I want to talk about is in the transition from the open step where you do feel fairly square because I haven't got any twist in my body at this point, to the next step taken in CBMP. I do have to now feel as though my leg is turned in. I could say that I feel as though the lower half of my body is turning to the left, while the upper half of my body is resisting that turn to the left. Of course, it is a left-turning figure, but what was the biggest error here 
going back flat, overturning the body and the feet, putting body weight immediately on this foot. And of course, we had a girl there, she would be stuck in my right arm and run right over top of her. So what I had you practice is the, the bit of a curve here, or the CBM, the, the beginning of a windup, which is now going to a fairly neutral position where I'm lined up. We'll talk about the sway in a moment. And then I am continuing to move my frame. I'm continuing to move my spine with the lady, but my foot is preparing. My foot is sneaking outside partner, very, very small step. I'm very close to her thigh here. Now, as I move my weight onto that foot, it's important to keep that rise and keep the spine moving and advance the lady so that you can step forward into your reverse pivot. I think some of these things will be more clear if you just go back and watch that video again, but we need to talk about these few little intricate parts to correct some of the mistakes. Now, you'll watch Marcus turn his head. It's more like the body's turning under the head because there's no extreme change in the head. But the weight of the head and the upper body are moving pretty much in the normal place for moving backward. I'm making sure to carry my head weight with my spine and not let it stay here. But as he's accomplishing the sway and the side step, he's beginning to shape. So in a way, if I allow my body to slightly overturn my head, I'm already into that shape. So you're keeping the curve in the neck to match the base and not get the head into this position. So that gives us a sense of looking towards our lady and advancing her first. This I think is the trickiest part of the tumble is making sure that you don't open the top of the legs and also put weight too fast. Put your toe in the water and advance over the foot. Make sure you continue to press away from the floor, lifting the heels and feel that you're using your center to move the lady first. So I hope that I've covered most of the points that we talked about today. Remember the sway is coming from the feet and ankles, the knees and the hips. The top is a reflection of that. Marcus made a point to talk about keeping the arms fairly level and stretched out to the floor. This goes back to what we've talked about before that the swayed side always needs to be braced. So rather than allow my upper body to fall, to increase that curve, I'm going to feel that I extend the elbow away from the shaping hip. So I think that when you're learning these things, they feel more exaggerated inside than they actually look. They're very classical dancers, so if you watch them, you'll see the shape is not overdone, there's nothing exaggerated. But in learning it, it'll probably feel exaggerated. So let's leave it at that, and then if there's other questions that we need to look at, we'll, we'll take a look at that next week.